I'm going to show you that tonight. John 1, 9 through 13. Now look what it says. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. Do not think this is just about Jesus. It would have said Jesus, right? See, there's Jesus in the Bible. There's Jesus Christ in the Bible. There's Christ. There's Christ Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was the human man. Jesus Christ was the Jesus, the human man anointed for the Christ. And when it talks about just Christ, it's not talking about just Jesus. It's talking about the body. So what this is talking about is the Son as a whole. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That's not just Jesus. That's the head and that's the body of Christ. Okay? So, and those who were his own did not receive him. Because you're going to go through the exact same process. The Bible says if you're going to rule and reign with him, you have to suffer what he suffered. So, and those were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. This is our assignment. To many that received him, he gave them the right to become, that's actually the word son of God. In the King James Version, it says, Son of God, even to those who believe in his name. See, your identity is not what the devil says it is in the matrix. Believing in his name is realizing who you are as a son of the father. You have his name. Remember, we talk about the process of a child growing up and taking on the family business. Okay, go ahead. So to believe in his name means to go through the process of sonship, to take on that family name, to have his authority, his nature, his character. So he gave them the right to be sons of God. We talk about the fact that a seed matures through the death to create a harvest, right? A seed goes into the ground and it dies and produces a harvest. God's got all kinds of spiritual applications in our world. Just stand, just stand a little bit. He's got all kinds of spiritual applications in our world. Why? To open up our eyes. That's why Jesus taught in parables. To open up our eyes. To show us things in the natural world that we could realize we're speaking of something greater. So we could get out of this matrix thinking. Okay? So this is what it's talking about. The Son of God is within you because Jesus went into you as a seed and the fullness is he's going to cause you to do everything that he did and lay your life down. Do not fall short of the glory by thinking that Jesus did it all for you and you don't have to. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Because see what it says in 2 Peter 3, 11 through 12. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you be in holy conduct and godliness? Now look at what it says. Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God. You know what that's saying? We actually have the ability to hasten or delay the coming of the Son of God. How do we do that? Because the Bible talks about a seed going in, a child grows just like, just like Jesus. The Holy Spirit came over Mary. You're getting it, aren't you? The Holy Spirit came over Mary, overshadowed Mary, and then Jesus was inside of Mary for the gestation period, and then all of a sudden the labor pains produced the child. It's the same process. It's a parable. We have Jesus in our heart, and the fullness of that is that it's matured, and we birth a son, the Son of God. That's why the Bible talks about in Matthew 24 when it talks about the labor pains. So we actually can hasten it. How? By laying our life down. Because when you lay your life down, your righteous blood cries out and overcomes the spiritual atmosphere. Breaking through this matrix and connecting with heaven. And you bring heaven to earth. You walk around in agreement with heaven and you can start manifesting heaven on earth. And that's when you start doing the miracles. When all that junk is out of you and you can see it, you can believe it, you're lined up with heaven, you're lined up, your life is lined up with the kingdom, then you can release the kingdom on earth. 
okay? But there's a process that you have to go through. And that's what I want to talk to you about. We talked about in Mark 6 about how they were toiling. He had given them a taste of natural food, and they wanted more. And he said to them, he goes, you came for natural food, but why don't you eat my flesh and drink my blood? And by the way, it doesn't just say Jesus. It's I, the son of man's flesh and blood. Son of man is what we're still talking about. Son of man was not just Jesus. It was the Christ. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. That's what you're doing tonight. His word has gone into me, and it is coming out of me right now as flesh and blood. It's life. I have the ability to give life now, not take life as a soul. Okay? So like I told you, you can either have the diamond or you can have the mountain that the diamond came from. I'd rather have the mountain. But they were on their way to the other side. And what happened was an animus stirred up the sea because they were toiling in their own strength. They were trying to get to the other side, and for six hours, which is six days man works, seventh day, God uh, works through man, and man rests. That's what another one of those spiritual applications is. It doesn't just mean in the natural. Natural man reads that and says, oh, well, I have to work six days, and I'm off on the seventh. No, it's speaking of something more because Jesus did most of his miracles on the Sabbath. What is that talking about? Why would And because he did most of his miracles on the Sabbath, they sought to kill him. There were two reasons why Jesus was killed. He was killed for doing his miracles on the Sabbath, which is what Son of, Son of Man will do. When you've done your six days work, which is the Son of Man process, then the seventh day you, you will die. Your resurrection power will come through you and God will start doing the work. So the one reason was because he did the miracles on the Sabbath, and the second reason was, was because he said that he and the Father were one. But we are. That's the whole point, is the Father and us, we're supposed to be one. Anybody that tells you that's a lie is the Antichrist spirit, because that's what the Bible says all the way through it. It leaves you on this side of the Jordan hoping for Jesus to come and get you and be dependent. Whereas a son knows, has truth, and they have been set free, and they realize that I'm supposed to be one with the Father again because he wants to manifest himself through me on this earth. That's a whole lot more powerful and, and have more authority than just, I'm supposed to wait on Jesus to do everything. That's not, you don't honor him that way. You honor him by going through that veil that he pierced for you to have truth. So here they are, they're trying to get to the other side, and the animals stirred up the sea, and they're toiling in their natural strength. These are all patterns to show you. The Gergeshite teachings, it talks about in Ephesians, it says don't be um, swayed by every wind of doctrine. That word wind is animos. Don't be swayed by man's teachings of what the Bible says, carnal man's teachings. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit in the Word. Because it'll get you nowhere when you try to toil. You have to go through the wilderness, learn his ways, lose your human identity and your human nature because it opposes God. Your human nature is flesh. And flesh does not want to suffer. It doesn't want to suffer. So you have to lose all that and then you'll realize how to flow in the supernatural. Not through the strength of man, but through resurrection power that flows through you because you're one with the Father and he can trust you with the left side of the foundation of God, God's throne. The right side is truth, law, and judgment. And then you get extended the golden scepter to go to the left side, which is grace and blessings. But the church today teaches about grace and blessings, grace and blessings. But guys, that's only temporal because you have to be a parent that says no and you have to be a parent that says yes. You don't always say no, and you don't always say yes. The same thing with God. So he's got two foundations of his throne. Truth, law, and judgment, and grace. But you cannot have, would you give your child the family business before they learn the ways of your, your character, of your business? No. And that's why you have to be defined in his nature. And not, I just want your hand. I want, I want his face. I want to know how I can get diamonds from that mountain. I don't want to depend on him to give me diamonds all the time. 
and neither does he. He wants to raise up mature sons. So what we're talking about is not through the strength of man, it's through that seventh day resurrection power. Look what it produces. When they get to the other side, they're on their way, and what happens is, is God actually redeems the time because it says that they arrive when Jesus got in the boat, when they're toiling, and they see Jesus walking on the water, and they say, it's a ghost. So now they're not thinking in the natural realm anymore. They're not thinking in the matrix. They're thinking outside because they see a supernatural um, figure walking their way. So now their minds are shifted to the spiritual. That's what God wanted them to do. And so they cry out to Jesus because that's what you have to do. You have to cry out to him. You go through this life and he blesses you, that's fine. But if you want more of him, then he gets in your boat. And when he does, then the winds, the animos, stop. They cease immediately. And so then what it says is they are immediately on the other side. The Bible is very specific. They were only halfway they had toiled, but they were only halfway. So what happened? Time was redeemed. You've got things in your past, people that have hurt you, unforgiveness that's still affecting you. And so you have to pull up those roots so that you can get to the other side. God's not going to let you get to the other side until you are cleaned out. Because on the other side, look what happens. Revival. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. When they got out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him and ran about the whole country and began to carry all their sick. And laying the sick in the marketplaces, they implored him that they could just touch the fringe of his cloak, and as many as touched it were being cured. That's what resurrection power looks like. Jesus didn't do that. He, it was flowing through him because he did the six days' work in the wilderness. This is what the Son of God within you will be able to demonstrate after you go through the Son of Man process. Now look what it says. The Son of Man is all about the wilderness testing. Now, Jesus is in the Jordan. And the Father says, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. The Bible's very specific. Jesus hadn't done anything. He just all of a sudden just walks up to John the Baptist one day comes out of the crowd. Nobody knows who in the world he is. He walks up to John the Baptist and then the dove lands on him and John goes, that is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So what happened? He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. But he hadn't done anything. So then at that point, what happens is he, the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness to face the devil. And it says he was full of the Holy Spirit. It says he was full of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. God leads you, when you want more of him, he leads you into the wilderness to face the devil. You're ready. You've learned his ways. You are his son, but you've got to be perfected through your suffering. Okay? So why does the devil say, Three times, three different tests, he says, if you are the Son of God. Because it had just been proclaimed over him that he was. If you are the Son of God. The whole wilderness testing was about your identity. Are you a Son of God? Or are you locked up in the matrix? So the first thing he tells them is command stones to be made into bread. Now, what is he saying? In the natural, let us, let's understand it. Because it ain't about taking stones and making them into bread, right? Command these stones to, make, to be made to bread. That's saying, I'm going to provide for myself. I'm going to go get that 9 to 5 job rather than seeking God first. And that's when you become vulnerable. You have to let God provide for you. You have to seek Him first for the knowledge of, of how to solve problems because problem solving is the power to make wealth. But you have to go through this process of becoming poor and, and tribulation and letting him